Okay, so, so far we've learned about um, three types of energy, uh, right? We've learned about kinetic energy, kinetic energy. We've learned about uh, gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy. Um, and we have learned about elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy. Uh, so what were we to do? Well, kinetic energy we said was the energy that something has. Uh, if it's say moving, flying through the air, falling, being pushed, whatever. Uh, that's uh, how much energy it has because of movement. Gravitational, gravitational. Uh, potential energy uh, has to do with the positioning of an object. For example, uh, if you have a, uh, a ball that's a meter above the ground, well then it's going to have some potential energy because potentially, if you let go of it, it's potential, um, it would uh, accelerate, right? It would fall downward. So it has the potential to produce energy. That, it, that's the kind of way that you can uh, think about it, sort of. Um, and then the elastic potential energy, that was we said if we had a, like a spring or some kind of rubber, maybe a rubber band or whatever, um, we were saying that the, uh, the, the equation was very similar to kinetic en energy, if you remember. But we said that the elastic potential energy was how hard it was, um, or rather how much work you have to do to either stretch or compress a spring or a piece of rubber or whatever. Uh, so now what we're going to get into is something, what the hell is this random white line? I don't get that. Anyway, now what we're going to get into is something called uh, mechanical energy. So that's um, mechanical energy. And this is going to be um, basically only including these three types of energy, right? We're not going to look at any kind of energy from chemical reactions. We're not going to look at nuclear energy. We're not going to look at uh, electric, electric, uh, that electric energy, electric potential energy, electricity, nothing like that. We're not going to look at heat, no friction. It's actually uh, a relatively simple concept, mechanical energy, you know, but I'll get to why it's useful in a sec. Um, and basically all mechanical energy is, the mechanical energy of a system is its kinetic energy plus its gravitational kinetic energy plus its elastic potential energy. This is the definition of mechanical energy. It's just the total of all these three. And um, if something is frictionless, if, uh, if no energy is being lost because of heat or whatever, then uh, the initial mechanical energy is equal to the final mechanical energy. Because, uh, I mean, it should seem obvious enough that as long as there's nothing taking away from this energy, as long as there's nothing like friction or heat or any other force or any other uh, ways of losing energy, well then the amount of energy is going to stay the same. Uh, but what's important to notice is that the energy can change from one of these uh, flavors of energy, so to speak, to another. For example, um, you'll see this equation a lot, and it looks both simple and complicated at the same time. And it's not. It's actually just simple. Um, you just kind of got, I understand where it's coming from. Basically what this says is that uh, the starting kinetic energy, the starting gravitational potential energy, and the starting elastic uh, potential energy, if you add them all up, you get some number, right? You get some number, and that's in joules, right? Because this is joules, this is joules, this is joules. So when you add them all up, you get some number of joules. Well, when you add all of these up, basically what this is saying is that you're going to get the same number of joules as long as there's nothing like friction involved. So, um, for example, say we have uh, some kind of ramp, but uh, I, I also did this in the kinetic energy video, I think. Uh, but that was before I realized that, he, that uh, they were going to be teaching mechanical energy, so I figured out it was just something that I kind of had to cover. Um, so say you have a ramp, and it's, it's a weird shape. Maybe it's something like that. Now using your normal kinematics equations, 
I don't actually even think you can do this without getting into uh, some, uh, probably some both differential and integral calculus. Um, but uh, it turns out you can approach this really, really simply, or relatively simply, with a bit of an engineer, uh, not engineer, I'm sorry, an energy approach to it. So what you can do is you can say, okay, so uh, say the height of this, say the height is uh, 5 meters. Five. We're gonna, no, I'm not going to put in meters because that's the general unit. Uh, it doesn't matter what this length is. It could be absolutely anything. And uh, that's actually one thing that we'll see that's neat is that this versus this, as long as they're the same height, the ball at this point will have the same speed, which is kind of uh, not what you'd expect. But uh, getting back on topic, if this height is five, and say we put a uh, say we put a ball right there, got a ball, and let's say that that ball weighs, uh, or rather has a mass of. Um, let's say one, one kilogram. Now nah, let's make it two, because one confuses things. Uh, believe it or not, one's actually more confusing than, uh, than that, a whole number, because one makes you wonder where certain numbers coming from. But anyway, um, so the mass is two, and uh, it's starting from rest, right? So let's say you got the initial part right here. The initial part, we know. Uh, or at least we should know pretty easily. So. Um, let's kind of change all of that to red, because this is the initial, this is the uh, initial part of it. Let's even make half the equal sign red. Oh yeah. Okay. So, uh, the initial part that we've got going here, the initial energy in all forms, uh, mechanic, the initial mechanical energy, all that crap. Uh, initial kinetic energy, what is it? Well, mass times velocity squared over 2 is the formula for kinetic energy, right? If you don't know that, then go back to my past video. Um, but if that, that equation right there, if this is mass times velocity squared over 2, well, guess what? The initial velocity is 0, right? Because it's starting at rest. And if it's starting at rest, that means, uh, well, I'm kind of redundant being myself, but it's starting at rest, so the initial velocity is zero. So if it's not moving, it doesn't have any kinetic energy. What's the gravitational potential energy? Well, uh, we said that's how much you don't want to get hit by something, right? So that's how much it weighs times how high it is. Or uh, instead of how much it weighs, you could say the mass times the gravity, because it's the same thing. Uh, so we know that the mass is five. Uh, I'm sorry, we know that the mass is 2 times gravity, that's 9.81, and then times the height, which is 5, we get, um, well, 10 times 5 is 10, times 9.81, we get 98.1. I could cut that into a calculator, if you don't believe me, you can check it for yourself, but gravitational potential energy that we got was 9.81, and the elastic potential energy, is it a spring? No. Is it rubber? Probably not. So, we're going to assume there's no elastic potential energy, and you'll find that in most problems you give this, there won't be elastic potential energy. It's kind of convenient. But, um, so that's the initial um, value of these energies. So what's the initial mechanical energy? Well, that's equal to, okay, let's, let's go through this one by one. It's the kinetic energy, initial kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy, initial, plus the initial and elastic potential energy. Okay, let's let's work through this difficult problem. Okay, how much is kin uh, initial kinetic energy? That's zero, so I delete that. Okay, how much is gravitational potential energy? That's 98.1, we just figured that out. So, 98.1. And how much is elastic potential energy? It's zero, okay, so we can delete that too. So, the initial mechanical energy is equal to 9.81. And we also know that that's what the final mechanical energy it has to be equal to, right? Because we're assuming that there's no friction. Anytime you see frictionless, you can assume this kind of thing going on here. Uh, this kind of stuff where it's equal. Uh, I'll get into friction in one of my later videos, and maybe two of my later videos. Um, 
So we know that those are equal. So now we know that, uh, well, basically now we know the value for the mechanical energy of that system. So what do we do next? Well, let's solve all the same things for the, um, for the final energy. And you might say, oh, that sounds like a pain. It's really, really not. And you'll see why. So the kinetic, the final kinetic energy equals the mass, which is 2. Well, it's mass times the velocity squared over 2. I'm not going to write that down because that's just going to confuse you. The formula uh, in type mode is easier when I can write it out. But um, mass, which is 2, times velocity squared, and then that whole thing over 2, right? Uh, and what we get is that um, it turns out that this two and this two cancel out. So we ended up getting that the, I hope that makes sense, if not, uh, kind of write it to yourself, two d squared over two, the twos cancel out. So um, we end up just getting that the final kinetic energy is equal to v squared, the, the square of the velocity. Uh, so then what, what are we going to do next? The uh, final gravitational potential energy, guess what? What's the height at this point? It's zero, right? So if you drop it when it's at zero height, it's not going to suddenly gain energy, right? It, the height is zero, so um, our M A M G H formula, H is zero, so the whole thing's zero. Zero. And the last potential energy we said was conveniently zero. So what do we know? We now know that the final mechanical energy equals, well, <laughs> you can do this math. What do you get when you add up v squared plus zero plus zero, you get v squared. Hopefully that's incredibly obvious when you add those three together. That's just what the mechanical energy is. If not, um, I need to redo my, uh, some of my videos. Uh, hold on. We could squeak it. Okay. Um, hopefully that's pretty obvious. If not, uh, let me know. I'll try to help you. Um, so we know that our Initial mechanical energy is equal to 998.1, and we know that our final mechanical energy is equal to v squared, and we know that our initial mechanical energy has to be equal to our final mechanical energy. So guess what we do? We plug stuff in. So we get that 9.81, or I'm sorry, 98.1, right? That's the initial energy has to be equal to whatever the velocity is squared. In this case, don't use that as, a, as some sort of general formula. It's not. It's this, in this particular problem. This is just how it works out. Um, so then how do we solve for V? Well, we take the square root of both sides, and we get that V is equal to, let's see, view standard uh, 98.1. We take the square root of that, we get 9.9. .9. So 9.9 .9 meters per second, that's our our final uh, velocity there. So that's kind of problem that you'll probably see a lot of. Um, and if uh, if you see a problem like this, don't panic because it's uh, it's really not that bad. You figure out uh, assuming frictionless. There, in in a problem like this, we're going to say frictionless. But if it is frictionless, then you can assume that this, the initial and the final are the same. So you just figure out all the uh, beginning parts and you figure out all of the ending parts, one of them somewhere, or two of them, uh, will have some variable. For in, so in this case, it was V, right? So we, we had to have a V in here, and then we solved for V. We, we just plug stuff in. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you understand how to do that. Uh, if not, let me know I'll make another video. But uh, my next video is going to be on, let me think, let me think. My next video is, go is going to be on how to solve problems that involve uh, loss of energy through friction. So um, I'm going to do a uh, like a pushing a quick thing, kind of like one of the uh, one of the questions in I think the homework. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a teamwork problem. I don't know. But uh, I'll see you then.